Hello and welcome back to my channel. Has your doctor told you that you need to be induced? Are you freaked out and you think that the labor and delivery is just going to be so hard? Well, I'm here to encourage you today because that's what happened to me and it was not near as bad as people let on. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Megan Fox. I am a young Mennonite mom from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And today I want to share with you the labor and delivery of my second child. We had a son on March 21st and his name is Fletcher Vaughn Fox. He's about ready to wake up and want to eat, so I better film this video pretty quickly. If you're just here for the stats really quickly, he was born at 11.21 on March 21st and he weighed seven pounds and five ounces and we are so in love with him. He is three weeks old today and I just wanna share with you how he came into the world. If you are expecting a baby anytime soon, I just remember when I was at that stage, it was nice to watch positive labor and delivery stories on YouTube and to take encouragement from them. So I hope that's what I can do for you today. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe and hit the little bell button so you know when I upload a new video, which is every week. But enough about that, let's get into the video. So at my 41 week appointment at the OBGYN, I was still not anywhere close to being in labor. My cervix was barely at a one and I was a week late already. And so they scheduled an induction for the next day. And also that day it was really scary because they found something on a previous ultrasound that had gotten overlooked and they were scaring us and making it sound like something could be wrong with the baby. And it was just a terrifying day all around. So basically I went into my induction day feeling very rattled and kind of shook up and yeah, kind of tense. I was trying to relax because I knew that it's not good for you to go into labor all tensed up. But the day that my son was born was a Thursday and that morning I got up, I worked around the house, I filmed a video, played with my daughter, tried to take a nap, it did not work. Of course, I was all too keyed up and everything. But we went into the hospital at six o'clock that evening and the midwife came in and explained all of our options. I told her about my first labor and delivery and how that had went with getting induced. And Long story short, she decided that since my bishop score was pretty low, it was not very good, I was barely at a one, and my cervix was way back in, I was hardly dilated at all, they decided that they were going to give me sight attack to see if they could open me up a little bit to a two so that she could get a Foley bulb in. And a Foley bulb to me seemed like a backwoods kind of weird way of inducing a labor, but I'm all for anything a little more natural and she said that it often takes about six hours off of a labor. So I was like, sure, whatever, you're the expert. So she gave me Cytotec and I was supposed to relax and just um, bounce on my ball to try to get the baby into position and she would come back in in an hour and if I was opened up enough to get the Foley bulb in then she would do that and if I wasn't she was going to give me Cervidil that would hopefully just kind of cause slight cramping overnight and get me ready for Pitocin the next day. So I was really, really hoping that I did not have to get pit the next day. I was hoping this labor could go fast, but I know some labors and deliveries with an induction can take two or three days. So I didn't know what to expect. And I try not to have too many expectations because my first labor went really well. And I knew that it doesn't mean your second one's gonna go well as well, if that makes sense. So she gave me the Cytotec at seven and at 8.15, she could just so get that Foley bulb in. And she said it will fall out when I'm at four centimeters. So I was just writing in my journal and actually I was journaling all during my labor and delivery with my first child and with my second one. But this time, if I look at my journal, it's such funny memories because half of the stuff in my journal is written in my husband's handwriting because I was bouncing on the birthing ball and you cannot write and bounce up and down at the same time. So he, I was talking to him and he was writing it down as I dictated. So that was a really fun memory. But if you see me looking down, it's because I'm referring to my journal so that I get everything right. So back to the story, at 8.15, the midwife came back in and she just so got that Foley bulb up inside me. I don't know if I really explained what Cytotec is. It's just a like tiny little pill that they stick up you and it's supposed to soften you up and prepare your body to have a baby. So she came back in at 8.15 and I was barely dilated enough, but she got the Foley bulb in and she said, okay, try to relax, sleep, we'll let it do its thing. And it definitely, I had one labor and delivery before, so I kind of knew how a contraction felt and it felt a little different. It wasn't painful at all. I could just feel like little cramps and you could feel like the bulb inside putting pressure on you. And um, my cousin actually said that she had a Foley bulb and it was super painful, but I didn't find it that way at all. In fact, like I just felt like very slight mild period cramp type of thing. It was not bad at all. I wasn't even really counting them. I could see I was having contractions because of the monitor, you know, up and down and I could kind of feel pressure, you know, every time the hill went up and stuff. So I was having them, but it wasn't painful at all. So I laid there and I tried to sleep and around 10, 15, so it's like about two hours later, I felt like a trickle as I was laying there in bed. I was not sleeping by the way. I just was too awake, but um, I felt a trickle and I'm like, I wonder if my water broke. 
Anyway, the nurse came in and she asked me how I was doing and I said, I think my water broke. She's like, no, she don't think that's what it is. And she tried to get the Foley bulb out and she could not get it out. So I knew I was not at a four and this was like two hours later. <sighs> so I was like, well, this is not really happening. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go to the bathroom and then I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna try to sleep. So I went to the bathroom and that's when my Foley bulb fell out and I came back to the bed and that is when contractions started happening like pretty ferociously. And I heard that once your water breaks, they can get more painful. And this was like absolutely uncomparable. Like the first ones were not hardly even cramps. And then after my water broke, it was like full on ahead. I was like trying to breathe right and like moving around the bed and holding on to Josh and just trying to, yeah, concentrate on other things. And I, they say to go to your happy place and I didn't really have a happy place picked out or anything ahead of time. But for some reason, what came to my mind was me as a little girl swinging back and forth on the swings. I guess because I was like swaying back and forth and stuff to try to like relieve some of the pain and pressure. Anyway, so my water broke at 10.15 and by 10.45, like the contractions were coming on full force and she asked me, the nurse asked me if I wanted Benadryl so I could try to sleep and I'm thinking, lady, I cannot sleep. But you know what? I wanted something to relieve some pain and I remembered the first time when they gave me Benadryl with my first labor and delivery. It helped me a lot with just being like more relaxed and kind of sleepy or whatever. So I'm like, well, if I'm gonna be at this for a long time, sure, why not? So she gave me some Benadryl through my IV. And that was, at that point, I had about 15 contractions, which you're probably having a fit. Yes, I counted my contractions. I did that with my daughter with my first delivery, but um, it just feels like I can have a sense of accomplishment. And my one friend was like, you are nuts. She's like, if I would've been counting my contractions, I would've been counting like in the hundreds. Anyway, so I was at my 15th contraction and she gave me some Benadryl and she's like, it's gonna hit you real fast and you're gonna like, fall asleep. Nope, that did not happen at all. I was like in pain. I was really trying to like breathe through each one and they were coming back to back. I was not used to that. With my first labor and delivery, I had pretty much like a minute or two between each one. There's nothing in between. I was just like, as soon as I would lay back down on the bed, boom, another one would hit. And it was getting like exhausting. Um, and I'd only had them for half an hour and I was already like pretty tired and I was starting to think about, well, if I can't fall asleep after a while, I might just ask for an epidural. <laughs> Even though I did not want an epidural, I went into it just thinking, I'm scared of catheters, I'm scared of big needles. I did it without one the first time around. I just did not want an epidural. If you want one, that's fine, go for it. Um, and maybe I'll get one the next time, who knows. But I kept counting my contractions, trying to breathe through them. And then at 11.15, which was an hour after my water broke, I was just like, I have got to go to the bathroom. I was at 20th contraction-ish. I was like, I've got to go to the bathroom. And the nurse is like, mm, no, the baby probably is just pretty low. You probably just feel like you have to go. And I'm like, uh, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. Anyway, she's like, well, should I have the midwife check you? And I'm like, okay, go for it, I guess. Um, and she came in. At that point, I was counting my contractions and I knew I was close to the 25th one. I was like at 23. I'm like, no, not yet, just wait. I wanted to get through two more just to feel more accomplished. I did not really want to know where I was at because I was like, it's gonna be so discouraging. I'm, I've been through all this pain. And I'm probably still at like a four. Anyway, so she finally did check me at the 25th contraction and she's like, Yep, no cervix. And so I was really confused. I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you're all good. You're right at 10, you can push soon. And I was, oh my word, a wave of relief just went over me. I couldn't believe it. I was like, are you kidding me? It was like I was at the finish line of a 100 yard dash and I thought I was gonna have to run a marathon. So it was just like that crazy feeling. Anyway, I'm like, oh my word, I'm almost there. And she's like, she's gonna run across the hall and check on a lady that just came in. She doesn't know if she's like having the baby any minute or if she's just, you know, at the beginning stages. She's like, I have to run across the hall and check, but I can run fast. <laughs> and this is like an old lady. She's awesome. Anyway, so she's left the room and I'm like, no, I've got to push. I was like, I knew it. And I just knew my body, I had to. And so she came, she didn't even get to the other lady. She came running back in and she's like, okay, here we go. And I pushed basically for Three minutes, I didn't have to wait at all in between contractions because there was no in between. It was just boom, 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 back to back. So I just pushed whenever I wanted to. And so I pushed for about three minutes and he was born at 11.21. And so my labor had kind of started at 10.15 and he was born an hour and about 15 minutes later. So it was crazy, really fast, really intense, and it was over. I did tear, I needed one little stitch. She said she might not have done it if she was out midwifing in the sticks, which is what she used to do. Anyway, and she said that she might not have needed to do it, but she would just do it anyway, just to clean me up. So it wasn't really bad, but I did tear because his hand was up at his chest. And if you remember right, I told you that they gave me Benadryl. And at that point is like when it kicked in, like after all, like I'd done all the work and pushed the baby out, I just, boom, the Benadryl hit me and I felt zonk. So I'm laying there on the bed, the midwife grabs the baby and 
throws him up into Josh's arms, and Josh is like, he didn't want to, he didn't know what to do. He was like holding this slimy baby in the midwife. It was so funny. Anyway, I didn't even know it all at that time. I mean, I saw it happening, but I was like, you know, really tired. I wasn't sleeping or anything. I just felt exhausted, which rightly so, but also I had Benadryl and it just hit me right then and there. Anyway, and so I was just laying there kind of in like a daze. And it's so funny, after labor and delivery, at least for both of mine, the nurses and like Josh and the doctor would all stand around and talk about, oh my word, it was only an hour. And you know, look, they like talk about it play by play. And I'm like laying there in the bed thinking, hello, I did all the work. Why are you guys celebrating? <laughs> anyway, so that was pretty funny. But I, yeah, to make a long story short, I felt like recovery went really well this time around. And I kind of learned that I guess I'm okay with getting induced if my body like responds to it that well. So don't freak out if they say they need to induce you. It might not be that bad. It might not be that long. It could be, but it might not be. Don't guarantee, you're not guaranteed a long hard labor because it happened with me for my first and my second one. My first daughter was born in two and a half hours and my son was just born in about an hour and 15 minutes of active labor. So I hope that encourages some of you. So thanks so much for sticking around to the end. I hope this story was entertaining or at least somewhat informative. And I hope that if you are expecting a baby that you don't feel apprehensive or worried about it. And I pray that you would feel God's presence as you go into your own labor and delivery story. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. So I just sat down and started editing this video and I realized, you know what, there's so many more little details that I could have put in there, but I did not want my story to drag out too long. So if there's anything you were just dying to know things I left out, how I was feeling, or what Josh was doing, or anything that I did not clarify very well, I would happily answer them in an upcoming vlog or something like that. So don't be afraid to put any questions you have down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this, and yes, goodbye for real this time.